Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, you guys, we are back in Benton, Pennsylvania. It has been months since we've been able to make it here to Benton Antiques. We're gonna get inside, see if we can't find anything, which I'm sure we're gonna be able to. It's a beautiful historic building. Um, let's just get inside, guys. Let's do it. Here we go. Go on inside. Alrighty, guys, here we go onto the interior. I have to give you a ceiling shot and I want to capture the floors here for you. You are seeing, of course, the original ceiling, though it has been painted over. The floors are original. Of course, they've been refinished. Um, beautiful, as I said, outside historic building. Just want to kind of give you a quick overview of all of the goodies that you're going to see when you walk into Benton Antiques. I do highly recommend it here, you guys. The staff is so charming, delightful, very welcoming and gracious. Immediately will start up conversations with you like you were old friends. So do check it out if you ever have the opportunity or if you're planning a day trip, don't forget Bakery Antiques is right across the street and Rutherford Farms is right down the highway, five minutes from here. Alrighty guys, here we are in our first little spot. It is this darling little jack-o'-lantern slash scarecrow knee hugger. He is so cute. Those are hard to find. And here we've got a little Christmas dollhouse. She is all decked out for the month of December. $99 is really not that bad. If you are a miniature fan, you know how costly just the kits alone can be. That kit is probably like $200. Now throughout, you are gonna see these glass, glass. Well, we're gonna spot some glass here on the top. A little art glass bowl here. I do decide to leave that one behind, but these amazing um, gas fireplaces gotta warm our hands up there. It was a little cold the night before. Um, so a little cool in here today, but it adds a lot of character and charm throughout the building. I love it. It's the little things, you know, it's the aesthetic, it's the vibe, it's the feeling that you get oftentimes when you walk into a business um, and it makes you want to stay and shop longer. Again, we are still at the front of the building here, just kind of taking a quick look, loving the mugs there, that bright pop of color. I think that's super fun. Um, so if you have more of your earth-based or natural tones, adding a little pop of color is a great way to kind of spruce it up for spring and summer. Now, I have shopped at this vendor's booth before, and they have some really nice things. Of course, we're seeing some carnival glass, some cranberry glass. I do spot, oh, we've got a little pink fountain there. Um, I do spot, of course, the whole vases here in the back. They are priced very reasonably, $18 for the small ones, and it was 30 how much? 45 for the larger. Um, I did decide to leave these behind because I have done a lot of the pink with the blue, kind of looking for something a little bit differently. Love the crochet or the knitted uh, little afghan with the matching pillows there. I do decide to leave those behind. Um, I don't really like doing uh, the pillows. The afghans are one thing because you can wash those a lot easier. Unfortunately, those uh, pillows, those were kind of knitted shut or crochet shade shut so those can be difficult to clean you are about halfway through well i guess technically um we're a third of the way through but about halfway through on the entrance here and we've got another vendor booth and they've got a lot of stuff trying not to capture the people now our first pick of the day is this beautifully painted it is a clear glass vase it's very tropical and bright and sunny it looks a bit opaque though when i set it down you can kind of see the light coming through let me tell you what indirect sunlight it is amazing that yellow it glows i'm telling you it's beautiful six dollars i do decide to go ahead and pick that up uh probably i'm gonna say it could be late 20s though i do think it is mid uh mid 30s We've got a little Ellie Smith piece here in that beautiful green glass. Look at how it sparkles. I love how shiny Ellie Smith and Viking glass is. Um, to me, this was reading a little bud vase. I thought how absolutely darling would it be to put some flowers in there. Just a very simple piece. Um, again, a bright pop of color uh, to kind of spruce it up for spring and summer. 
All of the walls, you guys, trust me, they left no stone unturned. We do have some built-in shelves here, which I do believe were original. Obviously, they are missing their glass fronts. Loving the shelving unit here that we have on the side. Now, I loved this pot. I love this color in kind of like this light turquoise or Tiffany blue, Robin's egg blue. Um, it was unmarked. It was heavy, let me tell you what. So I did decide to leave that one behind. I can't imagine how much that would cost the ship. Now here we do have some artisan pottery. It's like in a salt glaze. It is, of course, signed here on the bottom. I've not been able to successfully identify um, the maker, but at 375, I absolutely love um, this coloring on it. So I do decide to go ahead and pick that piece up. It is a little bit free form, um, but, but I love that, that rustic charm. It's not perfect, right? Here we've got some embroidered table coverings, and the thing that caught my eye, of course, was this absolutely adorable little deer. We have the two children playing here, and I was a little confused. No, this is the vendor's name. Um, the price tag is on it here, and I will show you that here in a second. I was like, where's the price? Oh, it's right here. $21, which I thought was very reasonable. I did unfold it. Unfortunately, there was a pretty significant hole here right by the one child, uh, so we did decide to leave that one behind. Um, I know many of you are very handy with a needle and thread, but I do prefer to try to save or part of me, um, sell items that you don't necessarily have to repair. We've got some other ones here. Nothing was really jumping out at me. Um, it's unfortunate because there's children with the deer. It was just an unusual subject matter. Um, so I would have loved to have picked that one up. I, I'm, I'm on the fence about whether or not that was a regret. Of course, we've got some milk glass here. Mm, I do like the milk glass. Just want to look for those unusual pieces, um, very dynamic kind of sculpts. I think, again, you know, we, we see milk glass everywhere we go, um, but those unusual pieces are definitely worth picking up. Uh, it's white. It's going to go in just about anybody's home. It can go year round. So just because it's milk glass, I do urge you to kind of check it out kind of peeking over here to this other person's booth. But first, on our way over, we saw some salt and pepper shakers and this lady in her bikini, um, no shame in her game, get it girl. She's having a good time and that's all that matters in life, right? Uh, we've got these blue little clam shell shakers. I thought perhaps they were PY, but upon closer inspection, they didn't really have the paint application um, specifically. PY did a lot of very heavy black lining on a lot of their items, so I did decide to leave those ones behind. They were unmarked. We do have some little blue opalescent, the sugar and creamer. And here we've got another one of these little wooden ladies here. Again, no shame in her game. She said, I've got it and I'm not afraid to flaunt it. Get it, sister. Uh, we've got a lot of very traditional antiques or vintage items kind of curated here in the curio cabinet. I'm going for all of the tongue twisters here today, folks. Um, love this butter dish here with that floral detailing handle there on the top. I thought that was an unusual piece. Um, those can be a little bit difficult to decorate with, if you will. We've got some pink depression optic back here again, sugar and creamers. If you are new to the channel, then I have an obsession with two things, sugar and creamers, as well as opalescent glass. <laughs> Oh boy. So we've got some carnival down there and right around the other side, we do have a piece that is marked as Roseville. Look at that, that Jean Quill. Um, I gotta say, I don't know that it is. It definitely is arts and crafts in its sculpt. I love the delicacy of the handle. However, when I turn it over, there is no identifying mark for Roseville. Yet, it still has a Roseville sticker. So if you, anybody knows what's up with that, please let me know down in the comments. However, I did spot this beautiful weather piece. There was some very heavy crazing, which is very typical of the light glazes from Weller. That was a mid late thirties piece there, kind of on the tail end of Weller pottery. Beautiful Roseville, the Zephyr Lily, of course, priced accordingly. Um, I absolutely love that piece. We do have some more <laughs> Roseville-esque, um, kind of feeling it. Roseville has a very distinct, smooth um, feel to it, as well as a weight. But again, that piece was not marked. 
Here we've got some candlesticks. I thought this one was really unusual. Um, I love how the it almost creates a candelabra effect. We have a small Roseville here again. Oh, yep, that one was marked. I saw. Okay. Um, the colorway was highly unusual, at least from what I have seen um, in Roseville. You know, at sixty-five dollars again, talking about being unusual. I think it's priced fairly. And again, let's keep up with that unusual theme. We do have some art glass down here, and I'm absolutely loving this pulled um, kind of end of day vase here. And I love the delicacy of it. Look at those handles. Do you see those pass throughs on those? Look how delicate those are. Um, it's a beautiful color. It is unmarked. Um, we do have a nice finished bottom. I was kind of hemming and hawing about it. I did decide to leave it behind. Um, I have honestly been really more attracted to the pottery lately. So um, unusual piece, really cool. There wasn't enough room for resale on it. And I love these mod, these 60s, 70s canister sets here. Beautiful condition. Um, but again, they were priced for a collector and that's totally okay. We have now made it back into about the third or the last third of the building here. And of course, you're seeing the ceiling original. Look at they even have the numbers on here. Uh, they would pull pull um, rope and chain and they would use use those measurements to cut them. So they weren't having to continuously uh, measure everything out. Beautiful stained glass window here that is, of course, original to the building. Here we have got some red wing pottery. I absolutely love the sculpt detail on this. It's a very mid-century color, that pink there. Um, it is in kind of like a semi-gloss glaze to it. Uh, the subject matter really wasn't doing it for me. I think if it was had more painted details on it, that definitely would have been a good get, especially at 24. But it's one of those things, just because the label Red Wing uh, is there doesn't necessarily mean um, that the aesthetic value is there. While beautiful, um, I don't think that it, it really created enough intricacy or desirability to warrant getting the piece. I am seeing a little Fenton Santa Claus back here and the Amberina glass. I've sold him several times at $30. I think that's a very fair price. Um, we are so far out of season to really warrant me wanting to get that. I think in season it would have been a better get. Here we've got some little people. I love them. They're absolutely adorable. Of course, you've got four vehicles and four people. $19. Uh, for some people, they might be surprised. However, uh, the Fisher Price little people, there is some tremendous value on those, um, though I did decide to leave those ones behind. We've got some great mid-century glasses here with the Caddy. Absolutely love it. Um, it's very specific to a home. Um, a lot of little figurines up here. I do see this darling little pixie. I This is a regret. Um, I think that I definitely should have gotten him. I think he's adorable. Very Roy Royal Copley um, or American Bisque, if you will. At only $10, Michael, that was foolish to leave behind at that price. Um, so if you see it and you can get out to Benton, Pennsylvania, snatch it up, folks. He's really cute. We, of course, do see some, I love that early carnival in the Marigold. Not the biggest fan, personally, of the Marigold. However, the sculptural detail on it, again, it is that aesthetic that is really driving uh, the attraction to that piece. So I do love that. That rippled effect to it is really cool, I think. Just, again, want to give you guys a quick panorama. I know we're going a little quick with the camera. I'm going to have to slow that one down in the future for you. Of course, we've got some Delph there. I, I'm i indifferent with the Delph. I think it's really cool. I think in a very bohemian style, of course, with your wicker and rattan, those pieces go beautifully. Uh, and speaking of beauty, I absolutely love this red and clear or encased um, like a little trinket dish here. She's priced at $8, which I think is a very fair price. Again, very uh, finished, smooth bottom, beautiful color to it. Um, I It didn't really overly excite me. I think if it was closer to Christmas, I probably would have been more inclined to have gotten that piece because you certainly could have dressed it up for the holiday. Though I will say, now that I think about it, 4th of July, that piece would have done very well um, kind of for a vignette. On the fourth, add a little bit of blue to it. And with that clear glass, you have your white, uh, creating a very patriotic look to it, if you will. Got a lot of little smalls in here. Um, a little bit more contemporary. Again, you know, here we've got some Fiesta wear. I 
I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, the colors are a little bit too saturated for me. I do, again, prefer earth tones, more muted tones. Personally, I think they're a little bit easier um, to kind of uh, decorate with. And for me, it's a little bit more smoothing, soothing, though I will say a lot of people find a great deal of comfort in bright, happy colors. Again, we're seeing some more traditional pieces that we would find in a lot of antique malls. So the aesthetic value, the unusualness, is that a word? <laughs> it is now. Right? The unusualness, that's a word. That's totally got to be a word. I don't know. <laughs> there was some good business in here. So I was trying not to capture people. That's, that's always a good thing to see. We've made it back now into about the back half of the store here. Uh, obviously, this vendor has got a lot of little smalls and tinies, and I love looking at them all. Um, these are great little figurines of obviously they're salt and pepper shakers, but that doesn't mean that you can't still decorate with them. A lot of jewelry. We've got some Christmas ornaments up here want to get in the detail of it. I have to say, I've really been enjoying getting much closer to the items um, as we're going through our shop with me videos. Uh, I think it makes for more of an experience and hopefully you guys do find it more of an experience. Uh, the more closer detailed shots that we can get so you can really see everything and scream at the screen. No, don't leave that behind. <laughs> So it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. I guess it just depends on the item that you're seeing, right? Again, lots of jewelry. We've got some necklaces and bracelets here. Again, giving you those great detailed shots. I absolutely love doing that personally. I don't know what it is. Um, we're, we're getting up in the business of the vintage and antiques folks. That's what we're doing. We're getting up in the business. <laughs> We've got some while they're serving pieces here, kind of like a, this very much looks to me more of a gravy boat with matching candlesticks to it. Uh, really, a new, that's a lot of gravy. But then again, you know what, if you're a fan of gravy, that is the Roseville gravy boat for you. Lord, I said I was going after the tongue twisters today. Really liking these antelope salt and pepper shakers. Um, they are marked in, um, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can say the complicated phrases, but not the easy ones. The Thames, Antelope, Salt and Pepper Shakers. Um, I really like them. They're very Art Deco in style and feel. I did decide to leave them behind. Uh, I thought these actually were Blue Mountain. Turns out, no, they're not. They're just a Japan Redware. I, they probably came out at or about kind of like the precursor when the popularity of that green and brown drip glaze was very popular, which I still think it's a beautiful thing. Loving the color of this little puppy and kind of like a Victorian era boot here. Again, it's the color, the unusual subject matter that was speaking to me. It really immediately attracted it to me. And then talking about unusual subject matter, we do have this ceramic. It is obviously very mid-century. It's priced at $18. Um, it's kind of like this little Harlequin sitting in this abstract square. There's no marking on it. There is some chipping on it, though I will say that would be an easy touch up. Next up, we found these darling little bisque bunnies here. These guys are stamped made in Japan. I know it's hard to see there on the back. At $3 for the set, I could not pass them up. Um, it definitely was a bunny day here at Benton Antiques. And Omotomo Gato, Mr. Roboto, what? I love this. It's only 1995. Um, I was like, oh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Mr. Robobato, are you going to come home with me? I ran a quick comp on him. Unfortunately, he is not one that does uh, very well. He does have, as you can see on the packaging there, a remote that was missing. I do believe he was attached via a cord. Uh, so the cord definitely was cut, which obviously is going to dramatically affect um, his desirability. So I did decide to leave him behind. Though I will say when I was younger, I did have a much larger one and his name was Omnibot and he had a um, remote control and it was like one of those old school ones where you pulled out the metal antenna um, and he had a serving tray so he could bring you drinks and he had a cassette player. I miss you, Omnibot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, let's get ourselves together. 
We've got a very feminine and delicate setup here, kind of a mid-century Victorian vibe. I love the dichotomy, the mixing of the different eras, genres, um, and decor periods. I love that. Um, it makes for a very eclectic, very dynamic uh, setup here. We are now checking out a little blue swung vase here. Um, it was not identified. I liked it. The price wasn't necessarily where I would want it to be. I think right now we have had a lot of swung vases, so I'm trying to uh, pick out some different things. The glass basket with the pass-throughs up front, I think was a perfect example of wanting to try to bring new and dynamic and exciting things to you guys. Um, here, of course, we are seeing some hull, H-U-L-L, -L, serving pieces. Oh, look at that. That's, yeah, no, darn it. It was only $5. Um, the picture here is priced at $5. There is a little damage on that one also. I'm here at the bottom. I think that I captured the chipping on the bottom. Well, that's just the little one. We're going to get the more substantial back. But at $5, again, this is a great entry piece. I would not necessarily recommend using it for a picture, but I thought it would be absolutely darling as a little vase. You guys, did anybody else have these? Did your grandparents have these? Maybe your parents had these, these plastic food magnets. Ah. Uh, now, these aren't the ones that my, my grandmother had. She had like the apple, the pear. Um, there was a great bunch, but it was much more bright. It just immediately took me back to my childhood and digging through their junk drawer because these were in there. Um, so yeah, I had to get those on camera. A lot of salt and pepper shakers. Again, not seeing a lot of unusual subject matter to it. Uh, so we do leave those ones behind. Checking out the booth here. Um, kind of, it's got like a very kind of rustic country uh, aesthetic going on to it, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to go in here and check things out. You never know. Loving the little bunny here. Um, and of course, as I'm doing this voiceover, the manufacturer is escaping me. There are ones that are made um, that are very desirable, very collectible. Um, I did not believe that that is the one. I could have been mistaken and just left a million dollars, a million dollars and one sitting there on the shelf. I don't think that it is, though. Here we are on the back of the uh, salt and pepper shakers on the back of the rack. You can see we were just over there where the magnets were. We're almost to the end here, you guys. Don't worry, there is an upstairs and we're, of course, going to hit it up up there. Just kind of checking out. I like the unusualness of that green. I thought, uh, I mean, I personally liked it, but I'm not shopping for myself. I'm shopping for others. Love this. Immediately recognize it as Royal Copenhagen. Um, she is a more modern piece to the Royal Copenhagen. They've been around for about 200 years now. <laughs> Oh, I do see that crystalline vase. Love that. The yellow with the the fluted um, floral vase there. That was a beautiful piece. Again, they were priced for collectors. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to capture those on camera and share the beauty. We've got some coin dot here in the back. Um, I typically find a lot of that, so I do decide to leave those behind. This piece was really interesting uh, to me. Now, the vendor does have it marked as Murano. There were no specific identifying marks on it. I do love the unusual sculptural detail to it, specifically those kind of pulls and twists up here at the end. They're very delicate. Now, it does look to be a very nice piece. Um, we've got some cased glass here, of course, with the gold mica encased in there. I, mm, I'm like, mm, but is it? And then do you see that giant air bubble? Oh, and there's another giant air bubble. That's not to say that Murano glass would never have an air bubble in it. Um, however, seeing how large those were and the prominence of them, I said, oh, I don't think that is Murano. Um, here we've got another piece of hull. It is in the yellow with the green. It's only $15. Um, I decide to get it. The little area that you saw at the front was a glazed slip. So in other words, it's not a chip or a crack. Um, the glaze simply did not cover that. So there is some little exposed pottery there, but that's a manufacturer. Uh, flaw here. I absolutely love this piece. She is a made in occupied Japan and at only $8. I love those eyes. I, she is stunning. She is beautiful. I love her. That's one of my favorite finds. Look at those eyes. I love that teal eye makeup on the bottom, kind of giving her like almost like a droopy eye effect. It's I, 
She's beautiful. I love her. So happy with that pick. Um, and then it was, I said that it was cold and then the fans were on back here. I swear to you, it was like 30 degrees back here. <laughs> we're going to go quick. Because I was like, Ugh. I was like, do I have a jacket in the car? I was like, I don't have no jacket in the car. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so we are seeing some little things here. I thought this was pick a toy. Pick a toy. Um, they were little like five and dime. Um, typically you would find them at, on like a spinning rack. I think they might have been like five cents back in the day. Um, the, but it quite literally says pick a toy. Those actually have some really good value. We've got the heavenly angel here. She's had a day, a moment and a few years. Um, she was priced for a collector. Now talking about somebody who has had a <laughs> Oh, little bunny. <laughs> he said, hi guys. Um, he's really interesting. I have no idea what's going on with him. He does have a harder plastic head and body. He does have like this twisted fabric and these little bunny paws on him. And oh, bless his little heart. Those buck teeth and those eyes. Lord be. <laughs> a price. Not necessarily where I would want it to be. So he did leave him behind. But he most definitely was worth picking up on camera. Now, this guy here, the daily newspaper, look at him. He's got his little newsboy hat on and his little bandana. He's in overall really good condition. He, of course, is vintage, so there are condition issues to um, the fabric. Nothing that was so bad. Whoa, Michael, calm down. Um, they do have his hat pinned on, thankfully, because of people like me. Um, so I do decide to go ahead and pick him up. We've got like the quote unquote Porky Pig. I, he was an unlicensed knockoff of the Porky Pig. So that one is the plastic. I found him in ceramic. If you ever do find those um, and they're inexpensive, do pick them up. Because as you saw, $42, there's some good value on them. Now here we have got, this is like a 50s throwback to the classic chenille. This one is, um, or this could be 60s now that I think about it. It is a synthetic fiber, so it is not cotton. Um, I do decide to pick that one up. It is beautiful. There are no condition issues to it. We've got some pink bunny salt and pepper shakers. I love these little guys. They're so adorable. Of course I'm going to pick them up. Why wouldn't I? They're $7. Look how sweet they are. Or maybe they're a little mad. I don't know. And then I spot something down below. And I was like, wait, what is that? Is that more bunnies? I was like, is that a bunny in his house? And it's a salt. Yes, it is. Look at how cute these are. It's a little bunny house with the chimney. Now, the numbering does lead me to believe that these could be Napco or Leftem. And at $7, I was like, I don't care because you're so stinking cute. I almost cursed. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, so we're going to go real quick in here because at this point I was like, I got to get out of here. It is freezing. Um, so do keep that in mind. If the night is cold the day before you come shopping, you definitely want to bring a jacket with you. Um, if it is hot, you definitely want to wear a t-shirt. I do find this lithograph, this tin, a little space dog here, definitely priced for a collector, but Darn it, I wished he wasn't because I would have loved to have get, gotten him. While he was missing an ear, I think that he can be forgiven that. We've got another little dollhouse, of course, in the lithograph here. That is the tin, the printed on tin. Got a little basket, crock pot, murder implements. Why not? <laughs> We do have some Wade whimsies that we're seeing here. This is the calendar series. I love how they included the little card. Um, so you had kind of a figure that represented each month. All of them were present. It was $30. Um, I will say this, there is some resale value on them, especially given that it is an instant collection. The, uh, the October, the orange one up there, cat coming out of the pumpkin, he's definitely uh, worth it. Now I am seeing another little uh, whole pottery vase here in the yellow and the pink. And guess what? I got that one too. All right, guys, we're going to speed walk ooh, 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 up the stairs. No, I'm just kidding. I just fast forward. The <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we did make it upstairs to the second floor. Now there aren't as many vendors in here. It's a much more wide open kind of space. So if you're in the Benton area and you're thinking, hmm, I don't have anywhere to sell my stuff. Hey, hit up Benton Antiques. They've got room for you. 
We've got some great mid-century pieces here. Uh, so far as the glasses, loving the lamp over here. We've got a little figurine. We do have a kind of like a, um, a treasure craft-esque piece. This, these were a hobbyist piece, so people could kind of mimic the popularity of treasure craft at the time. Mm. Semi-creepy baby doll, not entirely. Royal Copley, the Mallard um, console lamp there. Talking about console, look at that TV, my lord. That was one of those ones that you literally could not sit too close to, or after a period of years, if you had anything on the wall, it kind of... <laughs> It like burned, <laughs> took it off. There was like a charred mark. Safe, right? Safe, fun entertainment for the family. Uh, sit around and enjoy some, some X-ray radiation, folks. Yeah. My goodness. Um, here we've got a chalk where I don't know what you would call this. Is this kind of like an Indian esque? Um, dancer here that would be a nightmare to ship the weight on him not to mention the size of the shade as i said upstairs it is a very uh, wide open space and there is room here uh, we do have of course a my buddy now this one's a little blonde here he typically my buddy um, when he originally came out there in the early 80s well mid 80s he was the brunette and i guess all the little blondes of the world were crying sad because they didn't have a my buddy that looked like them he did have some scuff marks, but that definitely would have come up with a magic eraser. Now we do see this chartreuse vase here. I thought this was Gonder pottery. It's not Gonder pottery. Gonder pottery, um, they loved these very abstract, very mid-century sculpts to them. Um, they did, they were very popular with the chartreuse. However, I believe that stamp was saying Hayward. I'm not familiar with it. I will say this, it was a very lightweight, almost hollow feeling and I know you're going to say but Michael it's a vase of course it feels hollow the actual like sides of it it felt um inexpensive shall we say so I did decide to leave that one behind though I will say this just because it felt inexpensive doesn't mean that if you fell in love with the aesthetic value and especially that chartreuse color that it's not something that you couldn't treasure and love so over here, oh, I'm seeing some case glass here. We've got a little of the gold glitter in here. Micah, pardon me. Um, free form, little trinket dish. Eh, not overly excited. It's a pretty piece, but nothing super special is about it. It kind of reminds me of like a, um, a mauve leopard though, doesn't it? It's a leopard you would find in an enchanted forest. Only $25. Again, I think that's a phenomenal price for a collector. Unfortunately, there is a little chip here on the end. Now, a piece that I immediately did recognize is this beautiful cameo-esque glass. Yeah, hello. Ceramic to it. Um, it is the Copeland. They, it's a beautiful piece. It's priced very fairly, inexpensively. Um, great for a collector. There's just not a lot of uh, resale value on it. Now, here we are seeing a retirement piece for Gunther the Elephant. This was a Ringling Brothers um, circus plush. It, it was made specifically for the circus. It's priced at $35. I was very interesting, interested. Uh, I, he's got some great aesthetic value to him. He's in overall really good condition. Of course, there is are some condition issues. He's not perfect. Um, I was trying to see if there was a date. There wasn't. Um, however, what I will say, I was able to run some quick comps and that's he's priced accordingly. Um, that's kind of where he's at. All right, guys, that's our last item. And we're going to do a little overview of everything that we got here. And then, of course, we're going to wrap it up outside. Again, I'm very pleased with everything that we got here at Benton Antiques. Really loving um, the glass painted vase there. Of course, the blanket, our newsboy. Loving that made in Occupy Japan piece. Alrighty, guys. Well, there we have it. another amazing adventure at Benton Antiques. I love it there. I can't say enough good things. Christine, it was such a pleasure to get to meet you. Thank you so much for being so kind and so gracious. Uh, you guys, Christine is actually the owner of both Benton Antiques and Bakery Antiques. And we're going to hit up Bakery Antiques in our next video on Friday. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And remember, if you're not already subscribed and you've made it this far, 
go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. I do appreciate it. You guys leave me a comment down below. Uh, let me know what your favorite thing was from today's video. I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, you guys remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. <laughs> Bye guys.